Hello and welcome. Okay, you guys, if you've been on my channel for the last couple of videos at the very least are expecting this box right here. However, you may be wondering, in my last box from Jackson's, it was tiny and I had 12 full pans of watercolor in this teeny tiny box and I only ordered four more, which I told you in those videos. So make sure you check those out if you are brand new and haven't seen those yet. I'll link them both up in the iCard and in the description box below. You can pause this, watch those in order down there, catch up and then come back if you want. Or you know, just stay here and watch this one, that's good too. Why is this box so big if there are only four full pans in this box? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Plus, after that, I have these two things to show you that are kind of fun. So why is this box so big? That is because when I went online to get the four remaining colors that I wanted, but it happened to coincide with Jackson's major sell on watercolor paper. Well, paper in general, but for me, that would mean watercolor paper, because I love watercolors. And I just took advantage of that. And I know I'm opening this box from the bottom because the front looks kind of complicated. Anyway, I bought a bunch of paper. <laughs> a whole bunch of watercolor paper. Here's my four little half pans, I bet. Let's open those first. I love this packaging, mostly because it makes great fire starter and I have a wood stove right over there. In fact, if you hear a fan in the background, that's my wood stove fan. Okay, there they are. Four little precious pans of watercolor. Cherry quinacridone red, cobalt sea blue, nickel azo yellow, and the transparent brown. So we will swatch these out in this video. Oh my goodness. I see good stuff in here. I actually thought I got two of these because they're only $5. So this Hanson Moulin de Roy paper, like I said, was only $5 and some change US and it's 100% cotton watercolor paper. The only version of this I have ever tried before is the 600 GSM or the 300 pound paper, which was a gift given to me by one of you very generous viewers. Thank you very much again. But can't find that 600 GSM paper anymore. At least I can't find it. So I thought trying the 300 GSM would be really, really cool. And I like 100% cotton paper. So 10 sheets of that for like $5 and some change, winner. And then I've seen this paper a lot online with other artists using it and they really, really like it. It's also 100% cotton, 300 GSM, 20 sheets. And I don't remember how much this was, but it was like half off. I'll put it up on the screen. I needed black watercolor paper, 15 sheets. And I got this size. This is the 11 by 14, isn't it? Nope, it is the 10 by 14. Because I was looking at all the prices of this and it just seemed like this might be the best deal because I could also just cut it in half and have a five by seven. Well, that would be cutting it into fourths. And it's black watercolor paper and I do have a lot of uses for that because now I have some metallic watercolors and professional gouache now. I'll link that video in the corner for you. Okay, so I got the same paper as this little one but in really big size. So this is 29.7 by 42 centimeters. I'll put the inches up on the screen for you Americans like me. <laughs> and I'll have to look that up because I just don't know that offhand, but it's big. The corner is damaged though. Oh, that's sad. Don't worry, we will get to these watercolors in a minute, but I wanted to go through these real quick just to get them off the desk. So these are gouache palette. Well, that's what I'm gonna use it for is for a gouache palette and I wanted this one because it came with the little collapsible water jug. It also came with brushes, which I didn't really care about. I just was interested in the collapsible water jug because the that was probably really loud on camera, so I apologize. But the gouache palette sits inside of the water jug. I don't know how it works. I've never used it. Oh, see, there we go. How cool is that? And it becomes a lid for it. And I believe it even latches if you know what you're doing. But I don't think that's going, I don't think that holds any kind of water. I have no idea. Anyway, the reason that I got this one over here, because this one had really good reviews. This one did not have that great of reviews. So I thought, well, are these different? in some way, and I figured I would just order them both and find out. I don't know how to open it. Anyway, what was I saying? I thought, oh, you just pull harder. I thought I would order it, find out. So it has silicone, 
So you can put your gouache in there and maybe sp a spray of water. Put this silicone thing on there. The silicone not only helps keep the moisture in, but it also helps keep the gouache from spilling out. So I think if you do this and have it in your bag and it's sideways or whatever, it is supposed to stay within those squares that you put it in originally. So that's the idea. Sarah Burns I know uses this and probably a couple other people do as well. Some use the slightly bigger version, but I have five colors of professional gouache and that's it. So I didn't even need a 16 well palette, but that's what I got. Let's see how this works. Open that up. So it's just very similar to my Faber Castell collapsible water cups I have shown on the channel previously. I don't know, go watch my old videos if you haven't seen them yet. <laughs> They're mostly in my Christmas ideas videos, although not this current year because I had other things I wanted in that video. So look on the 2020 and earlier Christmas ideas videos, you'll see those when you're done with it, just collapses, but you can use it like this and have just a little bit of water or fully open it up and have a lot of water. So let's see if this one is actually different. Oh, it did come with these brushes. They, one came already bent. I just, I don't know, they look cheap and weird, but they're brushes. And they came with some picture holders you could screw into something you're creating and hang on the wall. I don't know, seems something kind of strange to add in there, but whatever. Okay, so let's open this. So how will we know which is which? Well, this has slightly teal colored clip to match the cup and this one has a black clip but I'm pretty sure they are exactly the same thing. The reviews that went over for this one being I don't know what was it that was like three and a half star review and this was like a four and a half star review probably is all about this collapsible cup part and how this is supposed to clip into it and people are probably complaining that it doesn't hold water airtight like or I don't even know doesn't matter all right so let's check this out let's open it up and make sure hmm, this one's a little harder to open am I doing it wrong Ooh, that's so scary uh okay and yeah it's looks the same feels the same it feels exactly the same nice tight seal with the silicone the silicone feels the same everything's the same we're gonna move on we'll play with whichever one of these I decide to keep later because I really just want to get to these beautiful watercolors so it's a little warmer in my house today than it was the last time I opened these. So we'll see if I need to go put these in the freezer for a few minutes or not because they are so soft. The little wax paper inside often sticks to the paint on the top. You can kind of see how it is kind of attached to that wax paper right there already. So let's see if it'll pull off or not. Mm, that's not too bad. <laughs> Losing this little tiny bit of amount of paint won't make me cry too hard. But it's pretty soft. We'll see how these others fare. But I could take a brush and just use that and a swatch. That could be fun. And I'll open the rest of these without ya. The other three open without going into the freezer. Look how ugly this color <laughs> looks in the palette. So the swatches you get on your wrappers are very accurate, I've discovered. So it is going to be a very pretty yellow eventually, but sure ugly in the palette. That's why you swatch them, because you never know. Transparent brown. These two sure are pretty though. But look how gorgeous. Aren't you in love with these already? I've pulled out all the playing we have been doing already with <laughs> with all these watercolors. So we've been playing with salt here and here. We did mock-up swatch sheet. This was my original five colors until I just purchased all of these, what, 16 remaining colors. Look at this. Started to set up the palette, left the four holes for these four new colors. I have my Velcro command strips to put these in there. That's how I use it. You can see they or here, more like they snap together. So those will be great. We'll go ahead and put those in there based on the mock-up of how we want the swatch to be. And then I did the official swatch sheet. And on the back, we're going to be doing a massive mixing chart. That'll be exciting, huh? This is the swatching we've already done. We do have the four holes for the new colors. Of course, they're not gonna be in the right place now, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. They're just a fun swatch. And then I had a color template. It's a stamp set. And I'm going to do another entire page of the circles like this for some just fun mixing. And then I'm supposed to do a painting on this page, but when I did this black swatch line with a permanent marker, it actually kind of bled through my watercolor paper there. So I'll probably just have to work with that. First things first, 
is writing the pigment information on these because they come blank. So I'll do that real quick and I'll stick them in here. You guys have seen that process. If you did catch up on those other videos, won't make you sit through it again, but I just can't wait to try these colors out. So let me get them in the palette and then we'll swatch them. So I've been on my watercolor journey for what I feel like is quite a long time now. <laughs> and I can't believe how I keep learning new things and it's kind of neat because now I know I will forever continue to learn new things. But I did these swatches on dry paper for the top half and then I wet, I had wet just the bottom half of the square and had the color meet it and we kind of saw how it runs and then of course the water pushed back and you can see that especially in these several swatches here, that one. It's very apparent how the water pushed back. But what I have learned, <laughs> just because I've been inhaling other professional content like Kimberly Crick and so on, first of all, if you swatch in water, so wet the entire square, it can show color separation that you might not see otherwise. However, sometimes you have to have a lot of water to see that. So adding salt will show color separation if you have that happening in your pigment. So that's kind of neat. This one is slightly cut off because I have the rest of it over here. Hang on, I can put them back together for you. So look at that. Salt didn't do anything over here for the buff titanium mixture with the Aquarius Brown, but definitely did that. Even though it's not going to match the other swatches, I'm going to go ahead and do that for these new colors that I have. And my swatching and playing with new colors is forever changed now because of this, because it just, like I said already, shows you stuff you wouldn't know about your color and pigment otherwise. It's pretty dang neat, and I'm really, really grateful that I learned this from Kim Crick. As far as salt goes, we got nothing going on with that. Well, I, it is pulling a little bit of the color up. A little bit going on with that, and that's it. The others are too wet to even look at yet. We'll look at them when they're dry. Let's go ahead and paint them into this little swatch sheet, and I'm going to do these more on dry paper. And I will add the salt to these because I wanted to see what that would do on a really small space. So you'll get to see what that looks like here in just a second when I'm done. All right, those four swatches are dry and I brushed the salt off and labeled them. But I thought you might want to see how the colors that I actually bought compared to the ones I just mocked up using other brands. So the nickel azo yellow I mocked up in this sheet was from Core. So that's how they compare. It's these two here. Very interesting, isn't it? And the cherry quinacridone red, I actually had a PR209 from Daniel Smith, so that's how they compare. Granted, of course, the ones I just swatched, I put salt on, so you have to look at the left side of those, not the right side. Pretty darn close. This one is a bit pinker, which is interesting. Although this, this was also on the back side of Arch's paper, so that's sized a little differently than the front side, or not sized at all, or I think it is sized a little bit because it does act okay, but whatever. Okay, the transparent brown I mocked up with Mission Gold's red brown. It's not too far off. This one is a little bit, I was going to say more purpley, which I think it is, so a little bit more purpley, but that's a beautiful color. I love it. And then I knew I didn't have the right things to make a mock-up of cobalt sea blue. I just mixed the cobalt teal with ultramarine or something and let's see you can, so they don't really match at all but <laughs> it's not too bad it was kind of fun to just see it in there anyway I'm still waiting for the swatches to dry over in the edger sketchbooks before I can flip the pages do circle things so I thought I would just go ahead and fill in these this is that massive mixing chart I started last week oh my goodness can you believe it that is upside down that would totally confuse me so I'm starting out by adding the basically mass tone with a tiny bit of gradient in the diagonal of the new colors that I got. Woo! And when I get those in, then I can start on the mixing chart. And I'll explain how to do this in the future for you guys in a little bit more detail. There's a couple different ways you can do a mixing chart like this. Maybe we'll just play with that in the future. But for now, you can see I'm putting the full mixture across what is the top of the screen, which will be the side of my swatch sheet and then just adding a little water to it and putting down what you're seeing as the side. So basically what you end up with is this chart where half of the diagonal is your deep dark mass tone, if you want to say it that way, colors, and the other half of your diagonal is all those colors just diluted down with water. So it basically makes an entire pastel side of your mixing chart. And I really like that because it really lets you see what your colors can look like in a lot of different dilutions. 
Well, <laughs> we got one color. <laughs> and that's it. We have one color done. And that took 15 minutes. It felt longer than that, but no, I looked back at the camera and it was 15 minutes. I, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this all in one sitting because I want it to be enjoyable and I want to just work on it when I feel like messing with paint color a little bit. So I think if I just try and force it and do it all in one sitting, it won't be the enjoyable thing that I want it to be. Beats me if it gets done in this video or not. We'll find out later. <laughs> all right, you guys are gonna roll your eyes so hard at me that you're probably gonna fall over backwards, but I already need to change the order of the paints. <laughs> oh, did you die? Yeah, so I can't, I can't do it. I can't have the buff titanium here. It's just not working for me. It's gonna be fine on this mixing chart. The mixing chart doesn't care where the colors are because it's a cross-reference, but swatch sheet needs to be redone. Good thing I put these on Velcro. So the buff titanium can't be there. I need my yellows squished over there, and I need my potter's pink with the other reds. It's just, since this one turned out so pink, this one that needs to be over there. And I know some of you probably disagree and for very good reasons, I would think. <laughs> but uh, I just gotta do it. And then I'm kind of wondering, I like the Aquarius brown and the transparent brown are closer in color family than this Kaput Mortum. So I was actually thinking of moving this over by the black and scooting the greens down. That will probably drive me crazy too. <laughs> um, I actually usually put my browns over by the green, so that's what I'll do. I could put the greens over here and just scoot these down and maybe switch those two. Wow, okay. Well, if I haven't lost you to hitting your head on the floor after your eyes rolled so hard <laughs> that you fell over, then uh, stick with me and we'll do more swatching. The cool and exciting part about this is uh, we get to do more swatching. <laughs> I love that. And I'm going to try it on this new paper, the Moulin de Roy. By the way, these dried. So the salt didn't really do much on the Nicolazzo yellow. No big deal. And this, this transparent brown looks so strange because I didn't realize it, but when I scooted my sketchbook over to the side to move it out of the way, this side of the sketchbook was actually up on something, so it was tilted. <laughs> and so all the color started to run over here. And so it got a big puddle. So I saw it, I made it flat, I put more salt on it, which of course pushed the moisture back away from it. But it's, it's interesting. I still need to glaze over these. Now we'll let this dry not on a tilt because I'm about to scoot it back over in the same place it was where it was tilted. So we're gonna put it on the other side of the desk this time. And we move right on to the swatch sheet. And the really exciting thing about being able to redo the swatch sheet is that I can redo the whole thing with the salt method. And you guys, when this is done, it turns out so beautiful. I love it. In fact, I just wanna redo every swatch sheet that I own. And you'll notice I'm doing this bigger because I am going to glue it to the back side of that large mixing sheet and it will still fit in the palette. And that's something kind of new for me because I usually just make my swatch sheets basically the size of my pans so that, I don't know, I, I just I think for my brain, I was thinking if it looks the same size as the pans, then I would understand where the colors are better. But I have no problem understanding this sheet because I have used it a few times now with the palette and it, it works. So I've moved on a long time ago here to the circles and did some mixes and then decided that that was all I could think of as far as the mixes and decided to move on to the painting. And you can see I scooted the painting down below that place where the Sharpie had come through on the previous pages, which I think works really well for a beach scene, landscape scene, because it's longer than it is tall or wider than it is tall, if you will. Anyway, I do find a couple of mixes in the planning process of this painting that I want to try. So I do end up adding in a few more of those circle mix areas and then I get right into painting. So this is the buff titanium with the Aquarius black. I'm adding in a little Aquarius green because that looked amazing in some of my mixes. And then I start in with the ocean blue, the darkest of the turquoise blues. Go in with the next one, cobalt teal, followed by the cobalt sea blue. And look, I add more of that Aquarius green and I mix that with the ocean blue, it's so pretty. And because I intentionally wanted to use a lot of water on this piece so I could see the granulation and separation of some of the uh, more 
granulating colors. Duh, that seemed obvious, right? Anyway, uh, I used a lot of water and the Edger sketchbook is warping quite a bit and I get those two puddles in the ocean that you probably saw me trying to sop up a few times and I was able to successfully sop them up. I don't think that you can tell too much where the warping was. I often tape this paper down clear to the edges and like down to the next pages below and that prevents some of the warping but I didn't do that this time. And there you can see I removed the masking fluid. I got a little masking fluid happy in this one so I am covering some of those up making them a little bit more subtle. I just needed to do some dashes that were longer too so try and keep that in mind if you're masking off your stuff to not make your dashes and sizes and shapes all the same. <laughs> but anyway, it turns out okay in the end. Once I get this tape off, you'll be able to see everything up close. It's going to be really fun. Here you are. There's the original swatches and the color mixing chart we did in that first Roman Schmall video. It's already been linked. Here's all the mixing we did today. And if you can read my Shorthand, you'll be able to understand what that means. Basically, those top two are the Nicolazzo yellow mixed with all the colors written underneath. That one is the Cherry Quinn red mixed with colors underneath, plus the, I don't know, Cobalt Sea Blue. I missed it already, but... <laughs> some really pretty colors, and there's some really pretty neutrals, too, that I would love to do more muted painting coming up using just colors, mixes that make very muted colors. So I think that'll be really fun. And here is that swatch sheet with the salt all taken off. So darn pretty. Isn't that pretty? Just love it. And there's the mixing chart on the back that I have to finish. Well, that took a while, at least on my end. <laughs> this is probably going to be a very long video, but we have a complete palette that I'm extremely thrilled with. I love this paint. As of today, it's probably my second favorite paint after Core with this beautiful swatch sheet that I'm very nervous about because I can't laminate it until I finish this chart. So this will be a fun thing to do. It does take up all the mixing space plus some on the palette. So it's kind of a pain afterwards. You have to go wash and I may get two of these before I have to go wash my palette each time. So that'll be interesting. All right, uh, the new paper. We got to try this out. That's what this swatch sheet is on, but I don't know what it's like. You can't tell from a swatch sheet. So we still have to paint with all of this new paper and see what we think. I really appreciate that you guys hung out with me for so long today. So many fun things coming up on this channel. Remember to hit that like button if you feel so inclined. I really appreciate it. It helps my channel out. It helps me out. It helps me feel good. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Cobalt deep sea. I don't remember. I'm easily distracted. <laughs> That's funny. Don't usually see the measurement in millimeter. <laughs> I don't know what that word was. Ah, oh, you can see my reflection. Hello. Ding bong. <laughs> I've never used that term before. This is the brush I have my students by. Excuse me. Oh, you can't even see it in the camera because I'm zoomed in. Sorry about that, Ted. Just take my word for it. Whatever. I need. I'm very appreciative that you guys hang. Oh. <laughs>